Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design truss or tubular connections in RAM Connection Standalone. In RAM Connection Standalone, you can define K-style, Y-style, or X-style joints according to the configurations that you see on your screen. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on a couple of K-joints that we already have defined in RAM Connection Standalone. We will now turn our attention to the RAM Connection Standalone application, where as you can see, we've already created several different types of truss joints within our sample model. For this particular video, we're going to be focusing on our two K joints that have already been created. So let's go ahead and start with joint number one. Now to start the connection design process, select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and then click on the assign icon. For tubular truss style connections, we have two different options available to us. We can go with a tubular truss CHB style connection, which would be a directly welded connection type, or we can go with a gusset connection style. For this video, I'm going to be sticking with the tubular truss style connections. I'm going to select this connection template and then click on the assign button. Here you can see that RAM Connection Standalone has completed the connection assignment. Now the first thing I do after assigning a connection is take a look in my joint selection area. Here I should be able to see the status of the connection design. I can see that although the interaction ratio is less than 1.0, it is in yellow, meaning that it passed all code checks but did produce a warning. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at that by navigating to the connection pad for this connection design. To do that, select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on the edit icon, and then select truss connection. Here in the connection pad, you can modify your connection design. You can view your results or your DXF drawing. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of the options that we have available to us. Here you can see within the members area, we can go ahead and define our gap if needed. And then in the connection area, we can go ahead and customize our welding. In addition to that, we also have options to adding reinforcement plates. Now for this particular model, let's go ahead and take a look at this gapped option. So by default, it went ahead and gave me a gapped connection design and the default gap is one inch. Now, if you wanted to go with an overlapped connection, let's go ahead and see what that does for us. Here, what is gonna happen is that those truss members are going to become closer together. And again, we have an overlap that we can specify. Now for this particular model, let's go with an overlapped connection, but let's go ahead and move them a little closer to each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the overlap value, and then I'm going to review my results. Whenever you make any changes within the connection pad, the interaction ratio and status of the connection design will be automatically updated for you. Here I can see that my interaction ratio is less than 1.0, and it's now in green, meaning that warnings are no longer an issue as it's detailed right now. If you wanted some further information, Click on the results icon in the ribbon toolbar and you'll be able to see the steel connection report. This will include all of the design checks and geometric considerations that were performed, their status, and their code reference. The last thing I'm going to do while still in the connection pad is take a look at my DXF drawing. So every single connection within RAM Connection Standalone can be viewed as a DXF from the connection pad. This DXF can be customized and exported as needed. 
Now for this particular example, I did make some changes to this connection design. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the save icon, which will save that gap or overlapping information to this connection. At this point, let me go ahead and close out of the connection pad. We're gonna see that geometry has now been updated. Let's take a look at joint number two now, which is very similar style joint. It is a K style joint. So let's start the connection design process here. We'll select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the assign icon. Again, we're gonna go with the tubular truss style connection template and then click on the assign button. After the connection is assigned, let's go ahead and take a look in the joint selection area. And here we can see that my interaction ratio is greater than 1.0 and it is in red, meaning that I did encounter an error during the connection design process. To view more information regarding that error, select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, then click on the edit icon. From here, I'm gonna tell the program I wanna edit my truss connection. Now, since this connection is currently failing, I'm gonna go ahead and review the results first to get a better understanding of where or which design checks are not passing. So here we can see that my cord wall plastification is currently failing, and I'm gonna scroll down and see if any other warnings or information was encountered. Here I can see my gap ratio is also a bit of an issue. So let's go ahead and close out of the report. Now, since I'm currently failing, the first thing I'm gonna try for this particular exercise is to see if any reinforcement might be needed, especially since I got that uh, cord wall uh, issue. So in the data area, I'll now go ahead and take a look at the different types of reinforcing I might be able to add. Let's go ahead and see what flange reinforcing looks for us. Okay, so that did go ahead and affect the interaction ratio, not quite enough, but I haven't really customized what the dimensions for that flange reinforcing would be. Now, before I take a look at that, let's also take a look at the side reinforcing to see what that would do for us. So I can see that the flange reinforcement kind of moved our interaction ratio a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that, and then I'm going to customize my material properties. For this exercise, I'm gonna use A36 Steel from the United States database. In addition to that, I'm also going to customize the length. And for me, I'm going to make a plate that's actually longer than this connection. So let's go ahead and increase the length of the plate to let's try 18 inches. And let's increase the width of the plate as well. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the thickness of the plate. Now I can see that my interaction ratio is below 1.0, but it is in yellow, meaning that I did encounter a warning. So again, if I'd like some additional information, I'm gonna click on this results icon and take a look at that. So I'm looking for any red X's. And here I can see that my gap ratio is a little less than what would be recommended. So let's go ahead and adjust that. So I'm going to go up in the members area. I can see it's already set to gapped, but let's try increasing this value. So let's go to 1.5 instead. Okay, so what that did for us is it got us away from that warning. We're now satisfying that geometric recommendation or geometric consideration. And our interaction ratio has been brought below 1.0. Now the last thing I wanna do is take a look at my DXF view and I'll be able to see how this will be detailed in the drawing. If I'm satisfied with the changes I made, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this save icon to save these changes to this particular connection design. Lastly, I will go ahead and close out of the connection pad 
and I should be able to see the status of my connection has been updated and visually I'll be able to see that this particular joint has some reinforcement that was added. This point, this concludes our process for assigning a connection to a K-style joint in RAM connection standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.